He spent the rest of his day using his bus pass going from one neighborhood to the next till he got to the fabled Mashuno Park. He knew there was fishing to be had there at least, and that would give him another night of food. He was astonished at the size of the park in the middle of high-rise after high-rise. Letting himself wander slowly across the park, he picked up what metal he could find in the small piles of litter left behind by the tourist, amazing what people thought was trash, and the ponds were stocked with fish. After catching enough for supper, he began dancing for tips at the park house. He half regretted agreeing to meet with Lily again on the same day. However, as it got dark, he stopped dancing and packed up the cardboard mat he had thrown down and headed out. Turned out the tips were not good enough to keep him there. The sky had already turned gray by the time he made it back to the square. It was much emptier now that evening was closing in, and finding Lily was easy. She stood in front of a violinist not far from where he had first run into her. Calling out, he waved at her, and she walked over. So how did your day go? Bet you went to my Shuno Park? He smiled sheepishly. Yeah, well, you can tell that I'm new to town. So what's this big secret of the streets you have access to? She cocked her head to the side, studying him with a serious face. You know, if it wasn't for this odd feeling of knowing you, I would never just randomly tell a stranger. And really, that is what you are. Raising his hands in front of himself, he said, Look, if you're not comfortable with talking about it, it's fine. I get it. They sat in silence a few minutes before he said, Hey, I caught a fish while I was at the park. It looks big enough for two people. Do you know a good place for us to cook it? It's just I don't want to wait too long. It has been a hot day. Lily nodded, then nodded again as if making a decision. Standing up, she spun around and hopped onto one foot, waving a hand in front of herself, saying in a soto low voice, Come, follow me. I will show you the great secret. Then, without another motion or word, she began walking. He scrambled to get up, snatching up his few things to follow her. They were a few blocks away, when she suddenly turned beside an apartment building, leading him to a small green area. A picnic table and a grill stood on a small lot, tucked close into the back of the building. She motioned at the grill, and he went to work with the fish. His time as a scout when he was young was still serving him well, and before long the delicious smells of fresh fish grilling filled the air. He had just got to the part that always worried him with fish, peeling it off the bars of the grill, when he heard Lillian greeting someone. Ah, well, doesn't that smell wonderful? Glancing over, he saw an older man watching him fiddle with the fish on the grill. It's been quiet today, Lillian. No worries. Long as you clean up after them, and yourselves, it's fine. How's your wife doing, Bill? Lillian asked quietly. Fine. Nodding towards Zayden, he said. Who is that? Still learning is who that is, Lillian said. The suppressed laughter in her voice could be heard echoing in her words. His ears are still wet and he has got eyes the size of basketballs. A gentle cuff owl greeted her words before the old man turned to walk away. Enjoy your food and stay safe. Gotta finish my rounds. The fish was just as good as it had smelled, and by some miracle he did not leave half of it on the grill. They ate quickly and quietly, the light from the apartments making it easy to pick up after themselves and whoever else had eaten earlier that day. Carefully tying up the trash and setting it beside the now empty can, Lily spoke again. Been eating here for months now. As long as the lobby is clear and you clean up, Bill is okay with people making food back here, whether you live in the apartments or not. Never come and stay, though, if anyone else is back here. The streets were getting dark by the time they finished. She paused as they began to walk back up the alley, touching his arm to stop him. Look, I know you're new here, so I'm going to go ahead and let you know. After dark in this town, she hesitated. It's not ideal. She seemed to be struggling for words. What is it, drug dealers and gangs that take over? No, not, she shook her head. Just trust me. Never relax too much at night here. She stared at him intently for a minute, as though trying to impart the seriousness of what she was saying. Taking her hand away, she began walking again, saying over her shoulder with a grin, now on to the important stuff. They made their way through the quiet streets, the hissing and groans of the city the only real noise around them. 
turning down another small alley between a shiny new high rise and what looked to be an older set of apartments. She walked up to a small wooden archway with Ivy climbing over it. Okay, now we will have to be quiet. Through here, just follow me and don't trip on anything. With that said, she stepped through the wooden arch into the shadows between the buildings. She walked down what looked like a short alley and then disappeared. He did not realize how clever the hiding spot was until he stepped into the alley to meet a wall of green. Her hand stuck out of the bush and he heard a faint, come on, hissing through the leaves. Stepping through, he stared around in wonder. It looked like a forgotten city, or at least its dumping spot. A giant sign that proclaimed something about burgers still flickered with a dim glow. An out-of-date water tower rusting slowly and disassembled solar panels and weeds everywhere. Lillian looked over her shoulder and waved once more. He realized she was tired from the way her shoulders had begun slumping. Feeling a little bad for slowing her down to stare at junk, he sped up his feet. Then he spotted the tents, not one, but two of them, and they were not old enough to be trash. Lillian interrupted his thoughts. So this is it. Well, all I'm going to show you tonight. You can use that one. Gesturing at the second tent, she climbed inside her own. Making his way through the shadows to the front of his tent, he stuck his head inside. There was not much in there, other than a sleeping bag. Standing back up, he looked around the space again. They seemed to be surrounded by the backs of what could only be offices or apartment buildings. Some of their windows still spilled light out into the night, hiding details of more hulking shapes around them. He couldn't help but wonder if they ever glanced down to see what was happening in the junk. The faint well of an emergency vehicle split the silence and he glanced around once more at eye level before ducking back into the tent. He eyed the sleeping bag warily, worried slightly of bugs, before shaking his head at himself. It's not like he had another great choice. Laying down, he was asleep before his head hit the lump of his jacket.